You are watching Ask the Instructor. Absorb the knowledge. Become the expert. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Ask the Instructor. My name is John Crismo and this show is brought to you by the Tampa School of Real Estate. We're here every single Wednesday to help you understand the technical side of the real estate industry. But one of the things we try to specialize in here, I think we do a pretty decent job at it, is simplifying, breaking things down into simple, easy to understand concepts. And it's an underlying core value that we try to implement across the board, not just our courses here at the Tampa School of Real Estate. But let's talk about simplifying this, making money in real estate. How do you actually go about making money in real estate? If you've got a job that you don't like, or maybe you do like your job, but it just doesn't pay enough money, and you've seen people make ungodly amounts of money in real estate, and you're wondering, how do they do that? And maybe they're a real estate investor. That's not necessarily something we're going to talk specifically about today. However, this is something a lot of real estate professionals segue themselves into. Because, look, I'm not here to say it's impossible to invest in real estate with no money down, but it's a lot easier when you have money available to invest in real estate. Uh, and granted, I'm not here to get into a debate about investing in real estate. There's tons of opportunities, but there's immensely more opportunities when, in addition to being a real estate investor, you have a real estate license. Now you might be saying, John, I'm not even a real estate investor. You don't have to be a real estate investor. Most people that get their real estate license aren't investors. Maybe you wanna be an investor someday because that's where you could really get the passive cash flow that ultimately frees you from having to punch a clock. Look, in real estate, it does require work. So real estate being a broker being a sales associate it's still a job that you're doing now you could build it into a business however compared to most other jobs it's going to pay significantly more and most people just are unaware of how this works so we're going to be going through a bunch of different things today from commission and and what that is to how you can even just automate some money through referral fees. Because if you're getting started and you're doing this part-time or maybe you're just really busy right now and you don't have time for additional clients, you never want to turn somebody away, you refer them away. And there's a lot of agents who are referral agents who specialize in just doing referrals. And these referral agents who specialize in just doing referrals don't do much work other than making a connection with a real estate professional. So that's a very, it still involves some work, but it's a very passive way to earn some money, to, especially if you're a well-connected person. And here's the thing, you don't have to just refer people to Florida, you could refer people all over the world. And that's why if you're a practicing real estate agent, let's say you're just licensed here in Florida, and you've got somebody that wants to sell their house in New York or California or wherever, you could earn a referral fee for that. You don't have to do anything with them here in Florida, you just have to make the connection there's a one-page agreement called a referral agreement, so that's huge. And that's something that it's slightly more complicated than a commission because it's one step, but it's overall, once you understand it, it's actually a lot easier and way less work because you're really not doing any work. There's a real estate agent doing all the work, but now they're only getting 75% of the commission because you negotiated maybe 25% to go to you as a referral fee for handing over this client. So, so that's huge, we'll cover that today. But then also, whether you're doing this on a referral basis or whatever low part-time type of basis, because maybe you just want to earn some extra cash flow, or maybe you're trying to go all in. Maybe you're trying to be the next person to get a Netflix TV show or an HGTV show or uh, a CBS TV show or whatever it is that uh, our students have gone on to be featured on all these networks of being top producing real estate agents, so much so that they get their own TV show. And there's so many agents who have gone on to be top producers who don't care about the limelight, who don't want to have their own TV show, but real estate has changed their lives. So whether you're looking for real estate to change your life in a big way or change it in a small way, there's so many opportunities that are available. And we're going to be touching on that today. But if you have questions or anything in particular you want to go over, drop that in the chat or watch in the comments. We're going to take a quick break with us here. Stick with some John Crismo. You're watching Ask the Instructor. Are you studying for your Florida real estate exam? If you are, you need to check out our Pass First Try strategy. 
strategy. You're going to love this. It's four steps that we break down the process to study for your Florida real estate exam. So you're set up to pass your Florida real estate exam because that's what you're, you're studying for, right? To pass your exam. It's four steps. Number one, you learn the information. You've got to learn this to be able to pass the exam, but it doesn't stop at learning. Step two, you've got to reinforce the basic simple key concepts. As you learn this information, keep reviewing the simple things. You don't need to know everything, but you got to review these basic key concepts. Step three, you've got to test your knowledge. The exam's going to test your knowledge, so if you don't test your knowledge in advance, you won't find out if you know what you think you know until you take the exam. And then step four is be confident and prepared, because even if you know this material, you need to be confident that you know the material. Check out the full strategy at PassFirstTry.com. That's PassFirstTry.com. Hello and welcome back to this week's episode of Ask the Instructor. My name is John Carissimo and today we're breaking down how you make money in real estate. So let's get right to it. Let's keep it nice and simple. So we'll start off with a commission calculation. A basic commission calculation. You might already know how to calculate a commission. If that's the case, sit tight. So let's say we've got a, we'll take about what an average price is in the Tampa Bay area right now, which is about 450000 458, I think, is the exact number, but we'll say 450. And let's say you're getting 3% per side, per buyer or seller. Now, that is a negotiable amount. We can get more into the details on that, but let's just do some number figures first. So let's pull out our calculator. You're allowed to use a calculator on your real estate exam. So don't worry, you don't have to know how to do math, really. You just need to remember the steps to type in the calculator. You drill them enough time, and you will remember those steps. So that's $13,500 in total commission. So if we have a sale price of $450,000, a 3% commission. Now, commission, again, it's negotiable, but 3%, that would be pretty typical uh, for working with one side, buyer or seller. Could be more, could be less, but if it's 3%, that's $13,500 in commission dollars. Now let's say, so this is what's on the table. And you might be saying, well, what about broker splits? Well, there's 100% brokers out there. So you could potentially have all this commission on the table minus some sort of fee. Now, if you're starting out, you might start out in a commission split where you agree to split this commission with the broker. And in exchange, maybe that broker is providing additional tools, support, marketing, training, technology, office space, whatever it is that costs money, the broker needs some source to get money to pay for all these things for the business. So this isn't always a standard rule, but usually the more it is you're getting from a broker, the more expensive it's going to be. And there's very low cost or 100% brokers out there that usually have a very minimal, very simplified offering. And there's usually some sort of small fee, either paid by the agent or paid by the client or some combination. So this may vary. And there could be splits. Let's say you're in a 50-50 split where half of this goes to you, half of it goes to the broker. Even if that were the case, that's still almost $7,000 going to you where you're giving up 50% of the commission, let alone if you're at 100% brokerage. And we're going to break this down into hourly. If you've seen the shows before, we've done that. On average, it's eight hours to get this amount of money for a seller, depending on, of course, what the sale price is. But according to the National Association of Realtors, the average time it takes to close a deal of working time is eight hours for sellers. 24 hours for buyers. Buyers take a little bit longer, so not as efficient, not as cost effective. But there's tons of buyers out there that need our help. And there's a lot of agents who focus just on listings leave a lot of opportunity there for buyers who don't get the the guidance that sellers typically get so whatever the case may be we can get into those details and and we've got thousands of hours at this point not even hundreds of hours thousands of hours on our youtube channel on our facebook but of course at tampaschool.com forward slash success that's our success center and uh, that success center you'll be able to find all of these videos articles business plan calculators all kinds of things like that to help you better understand what real estate is and if you need any help navigating this sea of information out there not even just through tampa school of real estate but just the internet in general uh, i mean there's so much information out there and a lot of times it can contradict 
And so that's where we really shine at the Tampa School of Real Estate to help curate down to the most important knowledge. That's what we try to do. That's our number one core value to keep it simple. And that's why our courses are so effective because we kind of drill down to the need to know information in the best way it is that we can, that we're able to also sometimes having to stay within restrictions and parameters of the Florida Real Estate Commission for courses that count for credit. But anyways, uh, so point being, if you want to get more direct answers to stuff, call or text us. We've got advisors standing by with real estate licenses, instructor licenses, broker licenses. We've got a great team uh, of uh, staff here at the Tampa School of Real Estate. So call into us, 813-333-2676, and speak with one of our advisors um, where we can talk about this stuff more confidentially if you do not feel comfortable <laughs> putting your life decisions in a public chat environment. But if you do have any questions or anything it is that you want to see shown here on the board, drop that in the chat. But so that would be gross commission, 13500 potentially with some sort of broker split. But let's say you don't have time to do real estate. Maybe you've got a full-time job. Maybe you're just really busy, whatever the case may be, that you just don't have time to commit to making real estate your full-time thing. Hey, that's per completely okay. Most people, myself included, start real estate part-time. Now, I started as a full-time, part-time agent, meaning I was part-time, but I my goal was to transition into full-time. Call it a full-time, part-time agent. You're going in full-time and part-time hours because your goal ultimately is to go full-time because I was ready to quit my job and do real estate, but I was like, you know what? Let me dip my toes in the water because, you know, there's no guarantees of real estate. So I started with it part-time. But again, with the intentions of becoming full-time, being a full-blown selling realtor, joining the Association of Realtors, getting access to the MLS, doing all the things it is to get started in real estate, which that is the more costly option than, say, if you just want to earn referral fees. Now, why is that the more costly option? Why is it more costly if you want to actually practice real estate versus just refer real estate? Well, the big thing that's going to be the costly part of this is the Association of Realtors and MLS. Because if you're practicing real estate, anything where you're actually running a business as opposed to just referring business, it's going to cost significantly more to run the business than it does to refer the business. Now, you might have some big ambitions and you're ready to do that. Like I said, I'm in your boat. That, that's what I did when I got started. I had a full-time job and I was making decent money, but not anything that I would go and brag about. But enough that I could have some money saved up to be able to invest in getting my license, the licensing fees, the association of realtors, and so on and so forth, joining a broker. I'd set some money aside to do that. And, and also, I'd use a lot of credit cards. I, I racked up a lot of credit card debt figuring out real estate, buying leads, and doing all kinds of things because I was trying to scale a business that was not a business yet. So a lot of mistakes that I made, and if you don't want to make those mistakes, go take post-licensing. That course is so effective in getting you the need-to-know information for what to do after you have your real estate license, more specifically like what we're talking about today, how to make money in real estate. So that's more what that course focuses on as opposed to pre-licensing. But when I was getting started, I didn't take that post-licensing yet. Matter of fact, I was traumatized by the pre-licensing exam that I didn't want to have anything to do with another FREC required course. I wanted to see if I could make it in real estate before I worried about taking renewal courses. No one told me that course would be effective in helping me understand how to grow my business, so I avoided it. And for that reason, at least take a look at it and consider taking your post-licensing course as soon as you've got your license, because I promise you it will teach you things that are going to help you run a more effective real estate business. But that, that promise is going to wear thin the more experienced you become in real estate. But would you rather learn things through a course that you're required to take, that you're gonna to have to take, whether you take it early and learn the lessons that you wanna know, or you learn the lessons the hard way, and then you're still gonna take the required course anyways, because that's what I did. I learned a lot of lessons the hard way, took the required course for my renewal, realized that, wow, a lot of this information would have been useful when I first got my real estate license. So I'll get down off my soapbox about post-licensing, but that's definitely why you want to get enrolled in that right away. But one of the big things in there is planning your business where you're more effectively understanding what's involved, which hopefully that's, that's going to be what you'll be able to take away from today is understanding maybe do I want to be some level of full-time agent, whether that's a full-time, full-time agent or a part-time, full-time agent meaning that you're a full-time agent, but you're working kind of part-time because you got a day job. That's how most people start in real estate. That's how I got started. And what's really important there is that you're working smart. 
So make sure you've got time to dedicate to be able to work smart. That, that's going to involve some training, taking your post licensing, getting with a broker that has a good training program. And if they have a good training program, there's probably going to be some sort of commission split or some higher fees or some sort of cost for them to be able to put that together. Because everything in this world costs money. Anything valuable is going to cost either money or time. And money, there's an infinite amount of that in the world. Time, we all only have so much. And that might be the reason why you're considering real estate. You know, most people come to us not because they want unlimited income. Now, granted, that's very exciting. But most people come to us because they're looking to take control of their schedule, to make, make their own schedule, to be in charge of their life more so. And that whole kind of in control, not even just controlling the schedule, but controlling the rate at which you earn money. Because you can be in control of that through real estate, whereas a lot of jobs, you, you could somewhat be in control because you could do the best job you can. But honestly, and some of you might relate to this, the reason why I left the job, and you know, maybe somebody that remembers me from that job is watching this video someday. I always wonder if, if anyone ever sees these videos. Probably. They've probably seen our ads quite a few times. But anyways... Uh, one of the things that made me want to leave the position it was that I was in is I was capped out. An interesting uh, thing that, that's in real estate, and it's something that, that could definitely be a benefit depending on the situation in real estate because usually capping out means that your commission split goes away, at least temporarily, typically. But in the position I was in as an employee, when I was capped out on my salary, the only way I could make more money is if I got into a higher level position. And here's the thing, I had been trying to get into a higher level position. I had been doing so great, they had maxed out my pay. But yet I couldn't get into those other tiers. There's a lot of it that was my own fault in hindsight, but at the same time, there's a lot of things that were out of my control that held back the success that I knew was inside of me. So I had to make the tough decision to to get out of the vehicle that I was in and get in a brand new vehicle that I didn't know how to operate. Because I knew how to drive this little golf cart of a career that I've been driving, but I didn't want to drive a golf cart because golf carts can't go that fast. The golf cart wasn't getting me anywhere. I was already maxing out the golf cart. I had the pedal to the floor, and that golf cart's only going to go so fast. So I wanted to get out of that golf cart and get into a real vehicle, something that could take me further faster. But the thing is, this real vehicle was much more complicated than figuring out how to drive a golf cart. And it wasn't that it was even more complicated, because there was a lot of things that were familiar, but there are a lot of things that are different that were very important to know. And that's my best analogy I could get at vehicles that we're talking about since I wanted to say uh, getting in the right vehicle. But getting back to it, you're, the, the job that you're in right now, five years from now, ten years from now, what is the, the, the long-term potential? Because that's the question I asked myself that made me say, hmm, well, if I can make this much money in one deal, and according to the Association of Realtors, I can do this in, let's be conservative and say this is a buyer that takes 24 hours. Because a buyer, according to the National Association of Realtors, takes about 24 hours to close. So 13,500 divided by 24 hours, $562 per hour. I was making nowhere near $562 per hour. So I was like, okay, sounds good, but what if this is the seller? And this was the type of math that really got me excited. And honestly, I didn't even know this when I was considering getting started in real estate. So if you're like, wow, I don't even know this. I didn't learn this until I took a sales trainer's uh, boot camp thing. And the sales trainer was the one who taught me these National Association of Realtors because it was all about efficiency. And there's a lot of things that I learned about efficiency to more effectively drive my real estate career and build my real estate business. And this trainer was the one who taught me to focus on listings. It's a pretty obvious thing, which if you watch some of our videos here, you'll notice we, we kind of have some love for listings. We talk about listings a lot, and that's because as a real estate professional, you should have a love for listings because these listings are your personal inventory of real estate for sale. Yes, when you join, this is the whole point of joining the realtors and the MLS, so you, don't, you can access everyone else's inventory. Because when you put your listing in the MLS, you're giving access to all the other realtors, all the other brokers. You're giving them access to your inventory. They sell it. You split the commission. And not splitting 3%. It's usually 6% where you're splitting it half and half. But again, that's negotiable. Uh, that's all negotiable. But let's say you're doing this in eight hours because you're focused on listings. So now $13,500.
across eight hours. You're making now almost $1,700 an hour. Now, granted, this is before expenses. This is before cost of running your business. But look at the money that you've got on the table there. We're not talking about opening up like a food truck and selling like $5. I don't know if anyone's ever seen that show on History Channel, Food That Built America. It's a pretty neat show. Uh, if you're if you're interested in entrepreneurial stories, they've got a really great ones uh, on there. They talk about all these different food brands and, and, and rivalries and how they've grown and whatnot. But a lot of the these food brands, I mean, th their, their thing is volume. Because if you're selling like a dollar cheeseburger, I don't even know how much cheeseburgers cost at McDonald's or whatever. Now, let's say it's two dollars with, with inflation. But how, and let's say you're, what do you, what, what, what is the profit on that that you're making? Making 25 cents? And yeah, you, okay, maybe you do it a thousand times, but how are you going to go from making no hamburgers to a thousand hamburgers? Or how are you going to be able to compete with that? Because at, at that point, it's not even necessarily even about being able to make a better cheeseburger. That's something I learned from Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Robert Kiyosaki, if anyone's read any of his books. Being able to make a better cheeseburger. I'm sure every one of you could probably make a better cheeseburger than McDonald's. I don't know, you might have a love for a McDonald's cheeseburger. But I bet you could find somebody who says they can make a better cheeseburger. And this person who says they can make a Maybe you could make a better chicken sandwich than Chick-fil-A. Let's update the analogy here. Maybe you think you make a better chicken sandwich than Chick-fil-A. Every did, Have you noticed that? I mean, I, I don't really, I can't remember the last time I went to a McDonald's, but I see plenty of McDonald's ads, and they're pushing chicken sandwiches. Popeye's pushing chicken sandwiches. They're the chicken people, and they're pushing chicken sandwiches. Every brand out there in fast food is pushing chicken sandwiches, but none of them are selling as well as Chick-fil-A because it's not about making the best chicken sandwich. It's about who's the best business. Because with the whole Chick-fil-A thing, there's so much, it almost doesn't feel like fast food. Now, granted, it's really greasy, so at that point, it probably does feel like fast food. But the experience is usually very different at a Chick-fil-A than, say, most other fast food restaurants. And so, getting back to real estate, how you make money in real estate. You could be a differentiator in some capacity that makes you stand out but now you don't have to worry about serving thousands of people and hoping thousands of people come to your drive through on a regular basis for very minimal cost yes there are costs to get a real estate license to to join the realtors if you're gonna actually practice real estate but compare that to say starting some sort of franchise operation why do I compare that to a franchise because in real estate it's more like a career than it is a business it's kind of a hybrid. I, I don't really ever really know whether to call it a career or business. My, my preferred definition is a business, but at the same time, it, it is very much a career, and it starts out as a career because to turn it into a business, it, that's where you're making it bigger than yourself. And so many real estate professionals never even want to make it bigger than themselves because they realize just how big they can be. Maybe, maybe they'll hire an assistant. You know, I was just talking to uh, a new instructor that uh, we've recruited here this morning um, that just brought him onto the team. And uh, one of the things that uh, he's able to do, because he, he actually does multiple different things. He's uh, uh, a broker. He's got a broker license. He's got different franchise businesses. So he's a busy guy. But one of the things that he's done recently in his real estate business to be able to free up his time is hired a licensed assistant. And those are steps you could take to build a business that allows you to buy back your time which is something you can't really do in your job probably. Do we have anyone here maybe that's read the 4-Hour Workweek, the Tim Ferriss 4-Hour Workweek book? And one of the things they talk about in there is being able to delegate. To delegate. Now in your job, you might be able to effectively delegate out all of your job duties to where you don't have to do much. But now if you don't have to do much, why is the company keeping you around? Now in real estate, if you're the team leader of your team, or maybe someday you even start your own brokerage, I mean, you could delegate out. I still have a real estate license, an active real estate license. It's actually a broker license. I hold multiple broker licenses, but I'm very busy. Honestly, too busy to do real estate transactions myself. I don't do real estate transactions myself. But one of my brokerages has over 70 agents. And that's where I just send the leads to for my team to be able to work those leads. And that's something that 
Look, you don't even have to get your own brokerage to start a real estate team. When you're just starting out, you could take that whole concept of just like I said there, being able to refer leads. You don't have to have a brokerage. You just need an active sales associate license because then you could take this commission here, this $13,500. If that's the total commission on the table for this deal, this $450,000 transaction for one side, and let's say you refer the business and I'll be honest with you, I just signed a referral agreement a week or two ago for one of my agents and it was a 50% referral fee because the deal was pretty much teed up and ready to go. But I'm not going to say 50%, let's just say 25%. 25% is a very typical, I, I mean, if you've got somebody giving you pushback at that point, you might. It's negotiable. You could always negotiate. But 25% is a pretty common amount. So let's say you agree with an agent who's actually practicing real estate who's going to do the deal that if they do the deal with this client that they owe you a 25% referral fee. So on this 13,500, 25% is $3,375. Uh, and yeah, you'll have some sort of commission split with your broker typically. But let's say you're walking away with $3,000. That's one referral that's gonna pay for all of your costs to get licensed. You've gotta take the exam probably 100 times to be able to surpass this. Maybe not, it's like $38 a pop, so you'd probably get there. But you'd probably pass the exam way before you'd hit $3,000 in testing fees. It's only $38 to take the state exam. You just have to pay every time you take it. And hopefully you pass it on your first try. You only have to pay $38, not 70 year. 80 or 200 or 500 dollars because you keep taking the exam again if you don't want to avoid that check out our exam prep tools highly recommend that stuff but let's say you walk away with three thousand dollars now you might be saying well i don't know is that going to cover the realtor fees here's the here's the benefit of if you're just going to do referrals you don't have to be a realtor you have to have an active real estate license but you could join a brokerage who's not a member of the association of realtors which will allow you to be able to earn referral fees just for basically the cost to obtain a license. And this is what I recommend for anyone who, if you're worried about realtor fees and MLS dues, if that's what's holding you back from getting your real estate, don't let it. Get your real estate license because you get your license, you can be inactive without having to pay any renewal fees or dues or anything like that. You'll just have to pay a renewal in two years, which is about $50 to renew your license with the state, plus doing your post-licensing course. But I know a lot, of, a lot of people, we get people calling into us, can I start my post-licensing now before they even have their license yet? And, and technically, you could do, take a post-licensing course now, but it's not going to give you any credit until you have your license. My point is here that this post-licensing has a lot of good information. So even if you're not ready, you don't know what your plan is in real estate, we've got on our website what we call a complete jumpstart bundle that includes your post-licensing. And that, especially since we now have it easy to, to purchase right on our website, We've been selling a lot more of those, and, and that post-licensing course, once you get your license, getting enrolled into that, that's going to help you build out more of a business plan, so you don't have to commit to a broker right away. You could stay inactive essentially forever. You just need to get that post-licensing course done before your first renewal, which you usually have about 18 months to get that done. And in the meantime, if you come across a lead and you want to refer that to an agent, you will have to be joined with a referral brokerage. But these are very low cost. Maybe it's like $100, $150 or so to join a referral broker. It varies, again, depending on which broker it is that you join. But these are brokers where you don't have to become a member of the Association of Realtors. You don't need the MLS. And they make it very simple, usually, to earn referral fees. And so that way, you just fill out a simple form. You have the agent sign off on it. You agree to what percentage of the commission, or maybe you agree to a flat rate fee or whatever it is you agree to, you both sign off on it, and now you have a referral agreement that entitles you to earn commission if that real estate agent closes the deal. So that's the referral fees. Those can be super powerful. And like I said, something I would consider to get started in real estate. Now you might be ready to go all for it. Again, join the realtors because you wanna actually practice real estate. And you could do that as well. Look, you don't have to decide right now, but the longer it is that you delay getting enrolled in a course, the more it is you're going to be delaying all of these choices here because you don't get to make this choice until you have a license. You don't get to choose which brokerage it is you get to, to put your license with until you have a license to hang it with. 
I mean, yes, you could choose a broker, but what does it mean that you've chosen a broker until you have a license? Let's say you've got a broker that you've picked out that, yeah, I'm joining this broker, but you don't have a real estate license yet. What can you do? Yes, you could do some training, but what can you do to make money? And so that's a decision it is that you'll have to make, but you might not be ready to make that decision because you're not sure. Taking your pre-licensing course will teach you a lot about real estate. It focuses on a lot of laws and rules, but also covers some general practices, contract info, mortgages, appraisals, taxes. But that post-licensing course, that's about business planning, how to prospect for business, how to define leads, how to, to close buyers, how to, to handle a listing appointment. This information that you would need to know if you're considering practicing real estate, because honestly, Making a decision now before you even have your real estate license as to whether you want to go full-time in real estate or just do it part-time, that's not a decision you need to make right now because you really aren't well-informed of what the true costs are of either side. Now, if you're committed that you want to, to use real estate to make money in real estate, I would say don't worry about trying to figure out the exact specifics of it. Commit now and figure the rest out later. Get enrolled in a course, start learning about what real estate is, learning more about this, learning more about what it is that you do. Get enrolled in that post-licensing course if you've already got your real estate license because these two courses are going to teach you so much of the fundamentals and essentials of real estate. Again, the pre-licensing focuses on how to do real estate legally and the post-licensing more on how to make money with real estate. And you can get those both with our complete Jumpstart bundle along with all of our exam prep to help speed through that whole process. So I highly recommend that. But again, getting back to how it is that you make money. So we've already talked about commission. We talked about referral fees. But now let's talk about a pipeline. So what is a pipeline? And I don't mean like a fuel pipeline or anything like that. I mean a pipeline of business. Now, whether you're doing referrals or you're actually practicing real estate directly, you're going to have a pipeline. And your pipeline is, we'll call it this. We'll start with, we'll call it this, awareness. So people that are aware of you, aware that you're in real estate, people that have awareness of you, these could be friends, family, leads, social followers. Those are people that have awareness of you. And then there's going to be people who are considering. And these are those same people. But there's going to be less of them that are in this consideration rank. And then at some point, they're going to be seeking help. And where do most people turn for help? The internet. But then what does the internet do? The internet usually confuses more than it helps. Or maybe they come across some sort of paid ad that gets them in contact with a professional that can simplify. But that's usually the next stage here, is simplification. They're seeking help, they're seeking answers. And what's gonna really take them to the next stage again is that simplification. Finding somebody who could distill all this information down because when they're seeking help, this is moving beyond considering. They might see your ad on Facebook, but they're not really ready to buy. Or maybe they're, they're a friend or family member. They know you're in real estate, but they're not even considering using you because they don't have a need right now. But some of those people are going to trickle into this next category of considering. Considering what it is that you have to offer. Considering using your services, but not actively making the decision yet and then there's going to be people that are actively seeking help but they're not seeking help from you not until at least usually this case until they're looking for simplification they might start visiting your website more as they get into these stages if you have some sort of website 
you know, maybe you, and this is where if, if you're in some sort of related business, that we've had a lot of people that are in related or affiliated types of businesses where maybe they're dealing with people who, who ultimately need a place to live. I mean, that's pretty much everywhere in every business. And they don't want to be the realtor themselves, but they want to get them connected with the realtor. So if you're a well-connected person, realizing you don't have to have a website, but you want to realize what stage your network is in. Are they just in awareness? Are they considering? Are they seeking help? Are they seeking to make this easy? Because, again, this is where you really come in to, to shine as a professional to help make things easy. But at this point, that's where they become a client. And clients become contracts that come closings. And closings result in commission. So we get involved to help simplify, to help make this actually happen. To make them officially a client of ours. To get a contract signed, to get them to closing so we earn a commission. So whatever it is that you're doing essentially to get a client, you don't want to ignore all this part here. Because your sphere of influence, the people that know you, your friends, your family, any leads it is that you're actively generating yourself, maybe your office is providing leads, you don't want to rely on just one source of leads. And your best sources of leads are usually these right here, friends or family. And leads that essentially become like their friends or family. Social media can be very powerful as well, but that's because it's digital friends and family. Digital friends, digital family. So this whole social sphere of influence type of thing, you could do it the old-fashioned way directly with the telephone and emails reaching out to people, or you could use the new age social media. It doesn't matter how you do this. You just need to get in contact with people. Help build the awareness that you're a real estate professional that could serve them, to get them consider doing business with you, to get them to seek help and for you to step in to help simplify, turn them into a client or get them referred to somebody who can make them their client, who's going to do the deal if you're just working in a referral capacity. Once it gets under contract, you're heading to the closing. Once it closes, you get paid your commission. And your pipeline is essentially just these stages of your business. And what you could do, if, if anyone's ever been in some sort of managerial type of role before, look, just like I said, getting out of the golf car and getting into the, the, the sports car, there's going to be some similarity. So, you know, maybe you had a golf cart that had, you know, some manual transmission or somewhere you understand. You've maybe been in a management role and you understand managing performance. And you understand, okay, well... Not all my clients are becoming contracts. How do I improve that so I get more of my clients to become contracts? How do I improve my awareness? How do I improve these different stages to make my pipeline bigger? That's as simple as it is. You can find people that need your service and then provide them a great experience. We're just helping bring together the buyers and sellers. If we really need to get back to basics, you're like, well, John, what do we really do as a real estate agent? So let's say we got a buyer, we've got a seller, we're the sales associate at a brokerage, under a broker, and we're bringing together the buyers and the sellers. So we're maybe working directly with the seller and we're listing the property for sale. We may be working directly with the buyer, bringing them to different listings, or we can make double the money if we work with both sides. And anybody coming from other states, we don't do dual agency in Florida. We do something that's going to actually be simpler when you understand it. It's going to take some, some rearranging of ideas in your head to be able to understand what transaction broker relationship is and how we use it here in Florida. But it makes it very simple, very easy to be able to work with both sides of the deal as long as you understand the limited confidentiality and uh, the limitations of that transaction broker relationship. And the good news is if you've never had a real estate career before, you won't be confused by the stuff people coming from outside of Florida might be confused by as it relates to being able to work with both sides of the deal. But this is something that in Florida, again, it's one of the benefits of how the laws are structured here. And it is structured to protect the client in the sense that there is limited confidentiality. And ultimately, the transaction broker, they don't represent one side exclusively. They have limited representation for either side. 
potentially both. And through that limited representation, there's certain things, again, they have to keep confidential. But ultimately, as long as they stay within their parameters, they could very easily bring both sides of the deal together. And when you're able to do that, you typically get double the amount of commission. So instead of $13,000 in that last deal, we're talking $26,000, $27,000 actually, because it was $13,500. So $27,000. Granted, it is more work because you're working with now both sides of the deal, but double the commission money is probably work, double the amount of work. But that is the, that's the gist of what it is that we do. We're either listing a property for sale with a seller or we're helping sell a buyer on a certain home. And when I say sell a buyer, we're not like the used car salesperson that's going to come in there. Come on, you want to buy this house? Come on, it's a nice house. Kick the tires. Or I, I don't know, my used car salesperson impression is not uh, very good. But look, this isn't like some sort of whatever it is that your image or idea is. And no offense to used car salespeople out there. You're just the generic go-to uh, idea for most people when it comes to sleazy salesperson. But whatever sleazy sales experience you've had before, that's not what real estate is. And the thing that makes it sleazy, well, let's define that. If you're worried about being in a sales role and you're like, ooh, sales, I went to medical school, I'm an attorney, why do I want to be a sales associate? Gross. But here's the thing. We've got a lot of people in those that have those degrees, that have master's degrees, PhDs, uh, you name it, whatever abbreviations comes after. They came to got a real estate license because, look, I mean, maybe you enjoy what it is that you do. Maybe that's your passion, but maybe your passion doesn't pay well enough. Or maybe there's not opportunities available. Or maybe this is part of your retirement strategy. Or maybe it's just to make some extra money on the side. Or maybe it's to take advantage of your network of, uh, of high income or high net worth individuals if you're connected well. Because then referrals are a brilliant opportunity for you then. But that being said, getting back to what it is that we're doing here, we're not trying to sell people. When we're selling a buyer, we're not just trying to push one house because we have the beauty of the MLS. So if you're actually practicing real estate, this is why you join the realtors, why you get access to the MLS, why, why you would pay for that, because now you don't have to just push your inventory. You, you could sell literally every house that's on the market. And so if you're worried about having to be a pushy salesperson, that's not what you do in real estate. You're more a counselor than a salesperson. Yes, you're, you're, you're selling essentially, but if they don't like this house, you don't have to convince them to like this house. There's plenty of other houses out there. And it's really, you know, fine, counseling them through making these decisions. It's not your decision to make for them. If, you know, that's why used car dealers get a bad rap. Why, why they're the typical image for, for you know, somebody that maybe you wouldn't want to trust because they've got their cars on the lot and that's it and they don't want you going to the lot across the street but what if the cars are better on the lot across the street no across the street those cars are all lemons you don't want to buy across the street well what are you talking about see how now all of a sudden we're not in the best interest of the client because we don't want them to buy from these other dealerships that's not what you do in real estate you could sell any real estate Real estate is probably the most cooperative business because of the MLS. It's, it's built upon cooperation. It's built upon sharing commissions. So every other realtor hopes you bring them a buyer because then they don't have to sell it themselves. Yeah, it's great when you sell it yourself because you get double the commission, but most of the time, someone else is going to sell it faster. And so much so faster that it's way more productive to just take advantage of the MLS then just try to do this on your own and market the property 100% on your own without using the MLS. That property may never sell, whereas it's pretty much guaranteed to sell at the right price in the MLS. And that allows you to now serve that client in the most efficient manner possible, which again, now getting back to the client, this is why it's good for the client. This is why we're not, we're not supposed to be the sleazy salesperson because we have all the options. Maybe you've had a bad experience with a realtor before. I'm not here to say just because the environment is right for an ethical, good relationship doesn't mean that there's not bad, what do they call them, bad actors uh, out there, you know, bad apples, bad whatever, bad real estate agents. That's why we have the Florida Real Estate Commission. That's why there's Tampa School of Real Estate here, where we offer FREC approved courses because the Florida Real Estate Commission doesn't trust you to do real estate without taking one of these courses first. You need to take the course. You need to pass the exam to get the license, and then you need to do the renewal requirements to keep your license. And on top of that, you do have to be registered with a supervising broker. 
who's there to make sure what it is that you're doing isn't going to be anything that's going to get you both in trouble. And that's really what this is. I mean, we could talk about this and make it more complicated, but all we're doing is bringing them together. We're bringing together the buyer and the seller. We might be working just with the seller, and we list this in the MLS. That's where we come in. We list it in the MLS, and then the selling broker is searching the MLS, and that brings us together. That's why you would pay for the MLS if you're going to practice real estate. But if you don't want to pay for the MLS, if you don't want to become a realtor, you still need a license, but you could earn referral fees. And, and the fees to get a license are significantly less than the fees it is to join the realtors. So that might maybe the decision at first is I'm just going to get my license and maybe just start out as referrals. But then as I learn more, as I take post licensing, as I find out more about real estate, then I'm going to get activated with a full service broker, join the realtors, and maybe someday quit my job or do what or retire. Or whatever it is that your plan ultimately is. But you don't have to delay this. You don't have to put it off. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't because the Florida Real Estate Commission has changed licensing requirements in the past. And the last thing I would like to see is for them to make it more difficult by the time you go to get your license and all of a sudden there's a much higher bar it is that you have to pass to get your license as opposed to what it is that you do right now. Florida is one of the easiest states to get your real estate license in and that, that's the reason why i don't now the right now the the government is in a position of oh we don't want to necessarily hinder business and, and that'll probably be the climate for hopefully some time but keep in mind these laws and rules can change very quickly and you know if you've got to do twice the amount of work to get the same license than if you just started right now why wouldn't you just start right now once you get past your first renewal, your first renewal is going to be for post-licensing, which, like I said, that's why you want to take that course right away is to learn more about real estate. But after that, it's just a 14-hour, 30-question open book exam. And when I say four, I hate saying 14 hours because this doesn't take 14 hours unless you want to attend a live class where there's no exam. But if you're okay with a 30-question open book exam, there's no hour requirement. No hour requirement if you're okay with a 30-question open book exam to do your continuing education. So, and if you've got questions about any of these courses in particular here, the phone number 813-333-2676, you reach out to one of our licensed advisors and ask them whatever questions you have to go over whatever information it is that you need to make the best decision for your life, your future, your career, your business. That's what we're here for. And ultimately, at the end of the day, there, there's tons of people. This is why we do as much marketing as we do here at the Tampa School of Real Estate and why we do as much to help put our name out there because we know at the end of the day, there's going to be a lot of people who are going to consider a career in real estate, but only so many who are going to make that decision to make changes to their lives. And we're here for you, whatever, whatever, wherever it is that you're at. If you're still thinking about this or if you're ready to make a decision, but if you are ready to make a decision to start moving forward with this, we've got great promotions going on right now at tampaschoolofrealestate.com, so get enrolled. If you want to learn more about this, let us know. Send us a message. Drop a comment in the chat of what topics you maybe want to see more about. We've got tons of videos in the past from uh, everything from open houses to listing agreements to, to you name it. We probably have a video. If you can't find one, reach out to us, and we'll send some links your way. So that way you can learn more about real estate and understand whether or not the opportunities make sense to you. The chances are you're going to find out enough that you're going to probably find multiple things that probably make some sense. And if that's the case and you're ready to move forward, again, you can sign up and enroll right now at tampaschoolofrealestate.com or call us at 813-333-2676. Again, that's 813-333-2676 or check us out online at tampaschoolofrealestate.com. It's about all the time we've got for today. I want to thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Ask the Instructor. We'll be back on Friday for State of Real Estate. But until then, have a great couple days and I'll see you on Friday. I've been wanting to get your real estate license, but I've been struggling to find an instructor-led course that fits your schedule i'm proud to introduce to you our on-demand instructor-led pre-licensing course now you do not have to make a course schedule fit around your schedule to take an instructor-led course this course is designed to be 100 percent video based instruction and this video-based instruction, even though this is pre-recorded video, still gives you the opportunity to engage and interact with the information to ensure your understanding of important key concepts so you're prepared for your end of course exam and state exam. 
My name is John Chris Moan. I'll be your instructor in this course. And I've been with the Tampa School of Real Estate for several years now and have helped personally thousands of people going through the licensing process. I'm excited to be your instructor throughout this course. Now, as you're going through the course, if you need help, we're just a click away. In the corner, you'll see a little yellow chat bubble where you could message our student support team. Where you'll be able to get in touch with our team of licensed support professionals that have sales associate licenses, broker licenses, and instructor licenses as well. So you don't have just one instructor, you have a whole team of people from the Tampa School of Real Estate to help keep you on track, to help keep you uh, in the important information and to help keep you moving closer towards building your real estate career, getting it off the ground and being able to go out there to join a broker to activate your license and start earning commissions. All of that is possible and so much more, but to get started, you need to enroll. So enroll today, take advantage of the special offer we have on this on-demand pre-licensing course. You'll have instant access. As soon as you enroll, you'll get an email with information to log into your course online. So you get logged in and start completing your course today. You don't have to wait until the class starts. The class is already there waiting for you. So take action today and let's start building your real estate empire. Have you completed your post-licensing education yet? Look, I know you're probably thinking, hey, it's not my renewal deadline, I don't need to do post-licensing yet, but look, here's why you wanna do post-licensing as soon as you've got your real estate license, as soon as you're able to take post-licensing. It's not just another course about arbitrary laws that you're never gonna use again. It's about real world, usable topics that'll help you grow your real estate business, to help you take it to the next level. Look, let me ask you this one question. If this course helps you close just one deal, if you get one extra deal from post licensing, is it worth the investment? I'd say it is, we get paid pretty well. So one deal means a lot of money. Check out postflorida.com, that's postflorida.com for the full details about post licensing. powerful tool to study for your real estate exam is the question simulator from Tampa School of Real Estate. We've used our years of experience in preparing students for the Florida real estate exam to bring you the most powerful exam study tool available. In the question simulator, you'll be able to go directly to a particular unit so you can focus on the sections where you need the most practice. We have also included the percentages of each unit so you know which units are the most important for your real estate exam. Every question will immediately give you detailed feedback, which is almost always more important than the question or the answer themselves. After completing all the questions in a particular unit, you can go through question by question and review any that you've gotten wrong. You could also print out a report at the end of each quiz. The question simulator from Tampa School of Real Estate is 100% mobile compatible, so you can practice with test questions anywhere you have your phone with you. Enroll now at questionsimulator.com and get ready to pass your exam. Hey, so if you're thinking about starting a real estate career, it could feel a little overwhelming sometimes. Look, that's completely understandable. That's why we're here to help. If you haven't already, check out our success center, tampaschool.com forward slash success. Or if you don't even know where to begin, give us a call. We'd love to help you out. We've got advisors standing by to answer any questions you have and assist you in any way it is that we can. Our phone number is 813-928-0106. Again, that's 813-928-0106. Give us a call. We're the Tampa School of Real Estate. Do you want a career that allows you to be in control? With a career in real estate, you'll get to call the shots. Whether you're looking at starting part-time or want to become the next top agent, a career in real estate makes it possible. Find out what it takes at tampaschool.com. Do you want to incorporate studying for your real estate exams into your busy schedule? Now you can review the key topics you need to know to pass your class and state exams with our MP3 audio review. Simply pop in your headphones or connect to your car to reinforce crucial information while you exercise or drive. Listen to the first unit for free at mp3audioreview.com. That's mp3audioreview.com.
Are you thinking about a career in real estate? Hey, I'm John Crisma with the Tampa School of Real Estate, and we've helped thousands of people just like you obtain their real estate license. If you're thinking about a career in real estate, give us a call. The phone number is 813-928-0106. Our advisors are standing by to answer any questions you have and assist you in any way they can. Hey, if you're enjoying the show today, which I'm sure you are, be sure to hit like, subscribe, post your comments, share with your friends and family. Thank you guys so much for watching. Yeah.